Our next speaker is Bernard Tangbell, and he'll talk about audiovisual scores and parts synchronized over the web. I'm a composer currently teaching in France, Ex Marseille University, and a member of a lab called PRISM, Prism, an acronym standing for Perception, Representation, Image, Sound, Music. This new lab focuses on perception of sound. Some of its members, as I did, Jean-Louise, who led the LMA for many years in Marseille. So my research as a composer consists in informing performers with traditional narration <coughs> or say visual input, but also with an oral input, earphones or audio experience. So I'm looking forward to hearing Mr. Bhatti's presentation and I've enjoyed very much what I've heard so far. Um, the performer's perception plays a crucial role here. Indeed, music notation can be understood as a sort of stimulus which the performer can interprets in sometimes very unpredictable ways. But scores can also be conceived as codified representations in a more classical sense. Again, first through traditional visual means with images, symbols, solfege, but also with sounds, cues which are not yet music, but scores or representations. Hence, hence the title of my doctoral piece is Audio scores, a resource for composition and computer aided performance. So, for the last 10 years, my scores were made of fixed images accompanied with sounds fed into the ear of the performer, like click tracks, guide tones, spoken texts, even stage directions. But more recently, I became interested in using video, so animated notation, with mobile devices replacing paper sheet music. Um, I've had a chance to present a paper last year at the Teno conference in Coruña, Spain. Smartworks, a web-based distributed media player as notational tool for choral practices. Today I will present this year's updates and also some compositions using the same technology. So, I would like now to explain briefly the title of my paper. What Smartbox does is just what is written on the screen. It synchronizes audiovisual scores and parts over a network. I've already said that it's multimedia, audio and visual. Uh, if we think about polyphony, I find it important to state that a web application of this sort is particularly handy to send different parts to different performers. I will then show one important update this year which consisted in hosting the app over the internet rather than on a local server. So now Smartbox runs on the web, just like any normal website. I will then discuss the difficult problem of synchronization in order to explain why this year's <coughs> update made a big difference. And for this, I have to thank my colleague Benjamin Matusewski from Mirka Paris. I will finally present few compositional projects and pedagogical applications realized this year with this technology. So first, here is a diagram showing the architecture of the Smartbox. It is based on the server which sends and synchronizes again MP4 scores to the phones of the participants. This slide highlights the score and part aspect of it. In the classroom, typically the full screen the full score is already displayed on the board, while if each part, the soprano, tenor, bass, is displayed and heard individually on the smartphone of each student or singer. Um, the conductor's interface finally allows to start, stop, or jump to a specific passage. So, for instance, thanks to this app, we were able to sing in tune the 40 minutes repertoire of relatively complex polyphonies with the students of Ex-Marseille University. So 
so it has a pedagogical um, interest also. In this example, the server runs locally on the same network over Wi-Fi in the same room as where the participants are signal. But, as I said before, a recent update allowed to host the app remotely, so not on a single Wi-Fi or VLAN, but between these networks, so the internet. Um, so now, each piece listed below can be accessed directly by typing one of those domain names, themselves pointing to several IP addresses. So typing, for instance, for instance avignon.smartbox.eu on the internet will lead you to some pedagogical material I prepared for a class about early polyphony, in which, by the way, we talked a lot about the tenor part. Um, the app is made of two different types of clients. On the left-hand side is displayed the singer's interface, where he can choose his part and request it to the server. On the right-hand side is the conductor's interface, which allows to start, stop the piece, or seek to a certain time in the video. You can see the seek parameter very soon. Uh, yeah, this is the seek, so backwards, so forth. Following this update, I measured how the remoteness of the server impacted on the timeliness between devices. I did so by simply photographing several phones, measuring how much the cursor timeline differed each time. Here T1 to T6 represent six different photographs, and P1 to P5 represent the temporal value displayed on five different phones. What I call the sum here in, is just the addition of the delays between four phones according to a mean value, so as to evaluate the variability in a simple way. The lowest sum values corresponding to best synchronization performances, this measurement showed that remote hosting in many cases did not worsen the time accuracy too much, except on rare occasions where the server provoked important delays, which encourages to use the local solution at the present stage of development. Still more reliable in situations of performance particularly. The sync module, refers here to the sync library developed at IRCAM by Jean-Philippe Lambert concerned with synchronization for distributed audio rendering over heterogeneous devices in HTML5. Although the clock synchronization is not perfect and depends a lot on the phone's performances, the browser it is using and so forth, <coughs> I, realized, I realized that this was not the main issue with a large group of singers, the main problem is often due to various sorts of user interactions. When the singer puts headphones on, when the phone turns into sleep modes, etc., which all have the same effect, namely to pause or delay the singer's media player. And this is where it comes in the main update this year, uh, thanks to, again, Benjamin Matusevsky. Uh, we'll now see a bit of code which automatically, automatically syncs the phones that are late. As you will see, the code is quite simple, but musically it has a great impact on rehearsals and performances. Um, so this is client side. Um, the trigger sync time is common for all, so it's a sort of global clock or world clock. The sync time, on the other hand, is different for each phone. So it's an estimation by the phone itself of the delay caused between network latency by network latency. Video current time corresponds to the timeline value of one phone. Some compositional application. Um, that was the technical side of things. Now I'd like to show you what it allows musically, uh, what I wrote with this technology. Um, um, maybe we'll hear some, some things. Um, we'll, we'll hear some stuff now, maybe. Um, 
Well, first, a, a piece called Smart Box that we perform now every year since 2017. Let's hear, let's hear this. This is the electronics that I tried to imitate with voices with a choir. So, um, um, well, no, do, re, sort of thing. Just like this. And uh, well, the choir sort of they they sort of match they sort of manage to so it's my computer now. Maybe a different yeah. adapter. I don't think well. so. Maybe it's this because it doesn't display anything. Yes. Yeah, if you try to get the the menu, you don't have yeah. any. Oh. Right. Is it back? No, I just removed it. <laughs> Unless your piece is very conceptual. <laughs> okay, never mind. So the idea well, I showed you beautiful spectrograms that show that they sort of match the um, on the left was the, the electronics and on the right the sound. So let's hear another one. This is a multiphonic line and that was supposed to be um, um, imitated, it's the target sound that the voices try to imitate. So it's about 1,000 and uh, 1,200 hertz. So the ratio 5 against 6 is sort of minus third. And um, so here's the realization. It's just the same notes, basically. Uh, 500, 600, uh, it's an octave lower. But Okay, we've heard some little bits, and let's he hear the whole passage. Sorry, I'll try to go to my preferences, maybe. No, but I, I would have yeah, something yeah, this. So I'll play my piece again. Um, um, you can see audio score helping singers um, sight singing some um, material in Roland Spear scale, the tempered uh, scale based on all partials of the harmony series. So you can ask Go Kaidu here uh, if you want more information about that scale. So uh, the 
second aspect of smart works which I find uh, interesting is its scalability. Last January, we managed to perform a piece in which nearly 90 musicians simultaneously receive their score on their phone and with a very large audience too. So using smart works on a much larger scale than before. Uh, I'll play an extract. The five higher states correspond to solid. These are about uh, 76 young singers, the instruments. This is a recording of the concert. And it sets a text by a uh, French philosopher, Michel Pinsé. show that we will hear on the Performer Lab concert on Saturday. Just I show a little bit of the score. So this is what each singer receives on his phone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, also, I need to say that uh, I must thank uh, the Dechelis Ensemble. Uh, who have been supporting that research for 10 years. Even through them, we, we have uh, something on uh, yeah, <coughs> Société Générale uh, Mécena. Currently, a smart box is being used uh, in a no-pra rehearsal for, uh, for opera, for singers, and in, on the stage. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, if you'd like to hear more about this, I did a 30-minute interview on France Music where I play, explain in greater detail all that. Thank you. So, due to the technical problems, we deserve some additional uh, time. <laughs> so, time for questions? Is anything I didn't show? Yeah. yeah. I feel like on the, you know, the punchline of your code. I don't know if you would mind going back because it's like a, an issue that I've been struggling with for a very really long time. Too, but, uh, what yes, was your final solution to the synchronization? You have the. I feel like you're getting ready to you know, give me the answer to life. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the article you need to <laughs> look up is the Lambert, Robasevic, and Schnell American. Yeah, this. I think they, they sort out this uh, this this problem. Um, but you said you had a solution, like your trick. What was your trick? Um, the trick that my colleague Benjamin Malisevsky managed to code is okay. this. The idea is just that um, if the phone is not in time with the global clock, sure. then that's what happens. That video the current time becomes transport time. So the, the and this is according to a certain certain threshold. So if for for any reason the phone is suddenly late or early or something, too early, too much, more than half a second, say, then it is updated. Oh, it just jumps to... Yeah, oh, it's, okay, it's not see. very... It works for ear, for scores for earphones, but you can hear glitches if it's for the electronics. And, and sorry, just a follow-up on that was, I, I noticed just very briefly in one of the articles you mentioned, like Brian Ferniho, people like this. I mean, is there any evidence of having that sort of type synchronization where you 
have this fairly complex micro rhythm you can actually see people. I mean, you, you're showing these sort of coral pieces, which are these extended long tones, but how about like a real tight sort of complex rhythm? Uh, we're not there yet. Not that, that's okay. why <laughs> my, my research is, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to these congresses to hope that we, we manage to do that soon. Now the, the, um, the sync is not yet great. We would say in good cases, you can say that, yeah, they're all, they have half a second delay between all parts. But when you have 90 people, you don't see it. You see it they sure. exactly in time. But it, it's not yet very, very precise. And obviously, if you on, a, as I said, if you're on the internet on a local network, then it becomes even greater, the, the delay between. But I, I think, according to the paper uh, from the FM on synchronization, on, on the local network, you get a reasonable uh, accuracy of the time synchronization. It, it's not at all the, the synchronization I have. They talk about milliseconds. Yeah. I think the, the problem I have is perhaps people have old phones, uh, their browser. They, there's many. You, you need good anten Wi Fi antennas, of course. And yeah, there's several factors. Yeah, I mean, over the network, you're going to have like the speed of light problem. <laughs> it'll, it'll never be solved, you know. At some point, there's going to be latency, right? Well, I, w I was going to say it could, uh, it could be, yeah, speed of light, no? It could be fiber optic, uh, optic fiber. It could be, it could be super. Yeah, but if you look halfway around the world, there's still latency and the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so unless you go faster than the speed of light, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. So, last question. Yeah. Thanks for your presentation. I was just wondering what was your motivation for going to the internet as compared to that, given the difficulty and do you, do you, did you do uh, remote performances? Or um, I, I would love to um, get into that, uh, yeah, um, that area of uh, network performances and NMP, yes, yeah, network music performances. It's not, it, they, they are local NMPs, but I, I'd love to go into that area and just have, um, yes, the, that this application had just an input, output, video, and sound, and then that would be, uh, oh, that's so that the next you, step. So that you stream the performance happening on one place to the other place? I'd really like to do that. We, well, well, the smartphones piece is, we did it with uh, Maitrice, with the uh, young choirs in, uh, in the churches of Nantes and of Rouen. And I'd really like them, uh, 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 because of that word religion as well, I find it funny. So they would do a network performances between those two choirs. That's one of my dreams. <laughs> so, thanks Thank again. you very much.